Little Hayes? Yes? You can come back here. Wait! The block? Where I know y'all from? Y'all did that museum shit with Crenshaw, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. What you doing here, Issa? Oh, I just came here to clear the air. Is that right? I've been a watch on the ground and always. I was wondering if anyone knew who it belonged to. You don't touch another barber's head. That's just some shit you don't do. I was trying to help your ass out so you and the shop ain't lose a customer. Stop worrying about me and worry about your own bipolar ass. Another episode of The Wind Downs with Prentice and I today is my girl and your girl, Yvonne Orgy, who really needs no further introduction. Hey, Yvonne. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ready? Cheers. Oh, yes. 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 In this episode, Molly's mother has a stroke and is in the hospital. And this is a bit of a wake-up call to Molly, who has always been focused on work and herself. Does the news about your mom cause you to shift any priorities in your world? Absolutely. I mean, the fact that the news comes when she's, like, riding a stranger, I think that helps. Oh, yes. <laughs> can get in. Two perspectives, like, oh, 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 no. Yes. It, it progresses really quickly. Yes. But for sure, you know, it shifts, like, what really matters. Right. And I think in this episode, She's like, yo, I've just been focused on work and like, I need to be with, there for my family. Right. We can have such tunnel vision yeah. about things that we deem priorities yeah. and those health scares will just yeah. make you reevaluate everything that you prioritize and make everything feel trivial. And I think for someone like Molly, who we've over the last couple of seasons, yeah see her prioritize some of the wrong things, this was an opportunity to kind of shift her focus mm -hmm. and also show where she's placed in her family, you yeah. know? Like, she is the bearer of so much, and we've never really seen that play out for her. Yeah. And a lot of Black women are yeah. The, yeah. the anchor in their families, regardless of where you fall. Like, yeah. I'm the youngest in my family. God forbid, I know if anything happens, it's, <laughs> all right, it's, it's me. Right, yeah, right. So I'm gonna have to, you know, figure it out. And I think, you know, Molly's also one of those people that is that works on a timeline. So the fact that she's not married with no kids, it's like, I don't know that I am where I want to be, especially if my mom passes. And so I think that weighs very heavily on her, too. Yeah. I'm curious if you, Yvonne, the person, because you obviously have brothers, mm -hmm. like Molly has brothers. Yes. Do you see a lot of similarities in terms of how you come with your family <laughs> versus how Molly deals with her family and sort of like how she and her brothers are? Are they watching me? Are they going to watch me? <laughs> <laughs> the, Tell them don't watch the, this. Okay, yeah, so I, I am definitely the person that's like, can we talk about what happens? And you know, in Nigerian culture, it's very different. It's like, so you want to kill me? You want me to die? You are talking about? And I'm like, you know, you're gonna die eventually. But I, can we have a plan in place? Right, like, right. I'm not trying to kill you. I'm trying to be responsible because I'm not fighting. Right. At the funeral. But you bring up a great point because that is, and that's something that we discussed in the room. Like in a lot of our families and just culturally, it's so hard yeah. to to set up your death. Sometimes my mom and, and being very responsible will bring up like, you know, so when I'm gone, ah, don't talk like that. And you know, it's just you don't yeah. you don't want to put yeah. yourself in that position. But it's so it's so hard for us, and I wonder why culturally it is such a universal thing for us to get past. Because living has been hard. You're trying to talk about my dad? I'm trying to just figure out living. That's real. That's so real. Well, as you guys know, as we get older and we, we, we forge these friendships, sometimes life events will just kind of shift each, our function in each other's mm -hmm. friendships. How do you guys think Issa handles Molly's situation? I think especially coming off of what they were dealing with in season four, right? Where it's like they're both trying to be super intentional about their friendships and showing up for each other. Like, this is my friend, this is my girl, this is my sister. I love her, so I'm gonna do what I gotta do for her. This is what friendship looks like past 35. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? Like, yep. it ain't just trips to Cancun, it is, so girl, you need my help. Yeah. yeah. And, yes, you know, yeah. <laughs> so a big thing happens in this episode. Issa ends up blurting out that she loves Nathan. Mm. Mm. Shortly after she sees Lawrence at Condola, right, with the baby. So between Nathan not responding and the sight of seeing her ex with his baby, where do you think this leaves Issa? I think that Issa is in a moment where she's kind of at a crossroads. Like, she's trying to leave this, this old relationship behind and uh, move forward with this new man who, 
you know, if they've been through a couple of trials and tribulations, it's taken them a while to commit and to get there. And I think she's feeling vulnerable and yeah. she's feeling grateful. And that's the recipe to express feelings. Yeah. And her feelings are that she loves him in that moment. You don't think For she real. needs it? You don't so think many, she I think it? that she does. I think that sure. it's just, it just comes out, but I don't think that that's how she expected to say I it. That's fair. And um, that it's not returned. And that's, that's concerning. Has Issa in real life said, I love you first? Never, you don't say I love you first. I mean, <laughs> I felt that's not a G first, move. That's not, a G move. that's not a G move. You set yourself up like that, what? I never want to be in Issa D's situation. Like, that's my worst nightmare. Um, so yes, I think. You just wrote all the worst nightmares for this character. For sure. Okay. Yeah, basically you figured it out. <laughs> Thank you to Yvonne Orgy for joining us and to you for coming to our wind down. We'll see you next week, guys. See you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Five more.